Hey everybody, welcome back to Retro Money News. I bit my tongue this week, so it's kind of hard to talk right now. Uh, I'm gonna have to struggle through these stories, but there's only a couple, so let's just get started. First, we have this interesting story that Mr. Mario actually found. It looks like there is a kernel patch for the original Xbox that allows you to use hard drives bigger than the two terabyte limit. Mr. Mario says you can have something up to 16 terabytes. I don't even think you need that much to have the whole entire Xbox library on a hard drive, but I think the original Xbox library is larger than two terabytes. So if you did wanna have the entire library, it would be cool to use this kernel patch to be able to use larger hard drives in an original Xbox. Interestingly, somebody actually mentioned Make Megahertz in that tweet just to make him aware of this patch, and it looks like he linked to a, another kernel patch that does the same thing. But when you go to that link, it's not found. So maybe he's working on something to go along with the Xbox HD project. I'd be interested to find out more about this patch from Make Megahertz. Next, let's talk about this quick video from Arthur Miss. This is basically a talking head video that he's giving some updates for some of his projects. I recommend you go ahead and watch the video, but if you don't want to watch the video, here is the major things that he talked talked about in the video. The first major thing is his Wii HDMI mod is not going to be available as a DIY kit. It is open source, so you can make your own if you want to, but he's not going to make them and sell them on the side. The only way you can get a Wii HDMI board from him is to order his send-in service. So you send him your Wii and then he mods it for you and sends it back. This is a little bit of a bummer, but it sounds like these Wii HDMI boards are pretty difficult and time consuming for him to put together. There are some chips and FFCs that he has to solder by hand, so that process this really slows down him getting those Wii HDMI boards for sale. The other major things he talked about is certain mods that he sells are getting hard to get because of the chip shortage, such as the Super Nintendo RGB and DJitter mod combo, as well as the N64 RGB V1. I really appreciate Arthemis and all of his work, and it just sucks to see him negatively affected by the chip shortage. Next, we can see Mike Chi doing some Mike Chi things. It looks like he's got two dev boards strapped together. If we take a look at this picture, this is actually a RetroTank 3X Pro, which I think was a development kit before the 5X Pro, but it's kind of daisy chained into this other monstrosity here. I can only assume that this is some sort of a high-end FPGA, something that probably isn't going to be very viable to sell as a product, but it's always cool to see Mike Chi working on something new. It just kind of gets your mind working about what he's gonna come out with and what products that we could possibly have for the community. Next, we have this image from 8-Bit Mods. I know they had announced that they were working on a mem card pro for a different console, and this picture kind of shows off a prototype. I'm not really sure by the form factor what console this is for. I think this might be too big to be a GameCube memory card, and the fact that it has a screen at the top there makes me think that it wouldn't possibly go in a GameCube like that. <laughs> Some people in the comments speculated that it might be PS2, or a Dreamcast. A Dreamcast VMU might be an interesting idea. I think the screen for a Dreamcast is actually bigger than this, but we'll have to wait and see if they provide any more updates about what console that this Memcard Pro is for. If it even is a Memcard Pro, it could be some other type of project. Last but not least, we have some updates from Dan Coons about the Infinity Switch. It looks like there are some optical audio inputs on the Switch here, as well as some analog audio inputs here. I'm not sure if these are optical audio inputs or outputs. Can't imagine that you would bundle something together with a SCAR cable that would be an input. Maybe something like the PS2 or the original X Xbox, so you might feed that into this and then be able to switch optical audio at the same time you switch the video. Oh, now that I think about it, that actually makes a lot of sense. So that would be really cool if you could have the optical audio switch with the video signals. I think that would help a lot with people who have complicated home theater setups and they don't want to have separate optical audio switches as well as video switches. And another big update that you announced earlier today is the Infinity Switch is no longer capped at four HDMI inputs. We see here there's actually, what, one, two, three times four, that's 12. I'm done, that's only nine. So in theory, if there's no limits to HDMI ports, you could have just a huge HDMI switch. I think that would be really cool for people who are only trying to have HDMI mods in their setup. You could have everything going into this one switch and not have to worry about daisy chaining more than one switch or having a separate switch for one thing and a different one for another. You could have everything going through that one switch. And then Rain asked if it would have multiple outputs, so you might be able to have one output go through the morph when it comes out and another output going through a different scaler. And Dan replied that it does have dual output. Now I'm not sure if that means it has two BNC outputs or one BNC and one something else. Judging from this picture, it's not really clear. It looks like the, the base here, which is the one at the end, only has one set of BNCs and maybe some kind of a VGA. Anyway, we'll have to wait and see what all that means when we have more information about the Infinity Switch and the Morph. That's it for this week. If you want to suggest a new story to me, follow me on Twitter or join the Discord. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.